This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Today I planned on filming a video that involved taking some pictures outside, but when I woke up, it was raining. So on this rainy day, I figured I would share some of my recent photography pickups. These are all really cool film related things that I've picked up recently that I think you might enjoy, including a brand new point and shoot. I'm gonna start this video with my own dang product because I run this show. What I wanna talk about specifically before we get into anything else is the film pouches because I haven't really had a chance to properly share these on the channel and they have been a game changer for me. As you can see, they come in two sizes. We have the 15 roll pouch and the five roll pouch and they're basically divided pouches to store your shot and unshot rolls of film. There's a divider right down the middle to separate them. And it's also this sort of transparent material so that you can see how much film is inside the bag without having to dig too deep. And it zips up really nicely and fits perfectly into our crossbody bag. That's enough long weekend though. Let's get into some cameras. The first one I picked up at an estate sale for 10 bucks. And this is an Elmo Super 8 camera. I had never heard of these. This thing looks like it's never been used. There's not a scratch on it. And I honestly thought the design was really pretty. So when I saw this for $10, I didn't know if it worked or not. I bought it anyway. And currently I'm shooting a test roll on this thing to see if it works. I didn't even look that much into it when I bought it. I just saw 10 bucks and grabbed it. When I got home, I saw that it unfortunately says focus free, which is never really a good thing. So it means that the lens is fixed focus, but it does actually zoom and Super 8 as a format is so small that maybe a cheap lens doesn't make that much of a difference. So we'll see. I'm very excited to do some more testing with this camera. It's got this really weird fold out grip that's actually quite cool because it stores very compactly. Let me know if you've heard of these before. And yeah, I'm excited to see what kind of footage I get from this thing. also want to share the work of a photographer who I've known for quite some time. And I just want to share this work because sometimes you come across a set of photos that just sort of stops you in your tracks. And that's the case with these two books that I picked up from Mike Slack. These are two books of Mike Slack's Polaroids. And these photos at first glance appear really simple. They're of very simple shapes, colors, lines, textures. But I think only if you've shot with Polaroid film before, do you know how hard it is to make photos that are this beautiful with this medium? I think to me, these books really demonstrate sort of the value in mastering a medium. I think that's what Mike Slack has done. He has really perfected the Polaroid. The subjects are super simple, super ordinary, but it's in the framing and the use of color and shapes. And I think if you've ever shot Polaroid photos and you look through these, the initial response is to just be angry because of how good they are. I've never gotten results like this. It's this really interesting balance where the photos are so ordinary and sort of effortless looking. But in reality, I feel like every single one of these Polaroids is a masterpiece. And I just love looking through all these colors that he's able to get out of this medium. But it is about more than just Polaroid 
as a medium. I think these photos flow super well together and I'm always fascinated whenever I pick these books up. They are a little hard to find. They are already quite expensive on eBay. The first one I bought at a book fair from Mike himself and I actually hadn't seen his work before at the book fair I flipped through it in front of him I was sort of blown away and that's when I bought it now it is time for my new point and shoot camera which is the Rico R1 I bought this camera mainly because recently Allison has decided that my Yashica T4 is now hers which is totally fine with me she's been taking amazing pictures with it I'll put some of them here But that meant I needed a new point and shoot and I went with the Ricoh R1 mainly because this camera is so small that when you look at the side profile it's hard to imagine how a roll of film even fits in here. This thing is tiny to hold, it's super lightweight, it's got a great lens on it and it's actually relatively affordable compared to some of the higher end point and shoots like the Contax cameras and the T4. It's also got some pretty cool features like a panorama mode, which actually just crops the negative and probably my favorite, the through the lens flash metering, which means that when you take a flash photo, it actually shoots a burst of flash first to get an exposure reading and then shoots another burst of flash to get the actual photo. That's a pretty advanced feature and I was surprised to find it in this camera. The main downside, the reason I wouldn't recommend it, and the reason that these cameras are still affordable is the LCD screen. They are pretty much all broken. If you find one that works, it's most likely gonna break. And it means that you can't see what frame you're on and you can't use any of the modes that this camera has. So it's pretty much a turn it on, shoot with whatever mode it decides and turn it back off, which is fine with me. So yeah, that's something to consider. Also quick plug to the long weekend wrist strap on here. I think these look super cool. Moving on, this is more related to my studio, um, but I recently hung out with another YouTuber, Teha. His channel is Teha Types, who focuses his channel entirely on mechanical keyboards. He builds keyboards for some of the biggest esports gamers, and I hung out at his place because he also got into film recently. We did a Twitch stream where he showed me some different keyboards. Half he likes the spot. clicky ones. Okay, so between these two, you like He's this. He's a clacker. God, I'm, I'm already being put into these boxes. <laughs> I found his channel because he commented on my studio tour video and told me that I needed a new keyboard. And I was like, what is this guy talking about? So I clicked on his channel and I saw that the whole channel was dedicated to keyboards. So I was pretty curious anyway. We met up, he showed me a bunch of keyboards. I didn't know keyboards could be this cool. And he's giving me one to borrow, to try out, see how I like it. I didn't know I could enjoy a keyboard this much, but here's a comparison between my old one and the one that Teha lent me. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I will have all the links in the description. Finally, I wanna say thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is an incredible all-in-one website building platform that you can use to build your photography portfolio online. I've been using Squarespace for 
over three years at this point and they've made it so incredibly easy to get a website up and running with my photography. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, you can hit the link in my description for a 14 day free trial of Squarespace. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Willem for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. I'll see you next week with another video. Peace.